Hey guys, Eli here from Nintendo Enthusiast here for the newest episode of The Score. I know it's been quite a while since I've done an episode, but you know, uh, with the holidays and all, it was a little hard to get an episode out, but now that Nintendo has released its financials for the third quarter of its fiscal year, aka the holiday season, I felt it was pretty appropriate to put out a new episode of The Score to detail all that we know. Um, I'm not going to be answering any questions today because there's just so much news. Um, so first and foremost, I want to talk about how many consoles Nintendo sold this holiday season. Um, we know that in total, from October 1st to December 31st, 2014, the Wii U sold about 1.91 million units, that's almost 2 million units, and the 3DS sold 4.99 million units, uh, so about 5 million there. Um, this brings the total number of Wii U units to 9.2 million, and the total number of 3DS units sold to 50 million. Um, so there's two big things we need to look at here. Beginning with the Wii U, um, Nintendo expects to sell at least 3.6 million units uh, by the 31st of March, which means they would need to sell another roughly 600,000 units uh, before the end of, in the next three month period in order to meet their expectations. Now, I think that's doable. They've been selling about that much for the three months periods before the holiday season. So I think Nintendo will meet their expectations, maybe exceed it by just a little bit. Um, not a significant margin, but it will meet its expectation. Now, this is so, so important um, for two reasons. Number one, if you remember last year, Nintendo sold about the same amount of Wii U's, but the problem was their expectations were at around 9 million. Now that was ridiculous, uh, obviously they weren't going to sell 9 million units, but they sold about 3 million, and here, the fact that they set their expectations and they're going to hit their expectations almost exactly to the point, means that Awada and the uh, the guys, at the, the higher ups in Nintendo, know what sort of waters the Wii U is in, they know how much the Wii U is going to sell, they know um, how much of an impact their games are going to have, I mean, there were people that thought the Wii U was going to sell 5 million units, 8 million units after Smash and Mario Kart was going to be released, and Nintendo's heads um, at the top knew that that wasn't going to be the case. They knew that the software would sell a lot, but it wouldn't necessarily move millions and millions more of Wii U's. They knew exactly how much it would sell. Um, so I think it's very, very good that Nintendo is hitting exa expected exactly how much it's going to sell. It shows how much they really know about the market compared to previous years, and they know how much they're going to sell, um, which is really quite excellent because that, that informs their future decisions that they know the market so well. Um, the 3DS, on the other hand, it, it, it's they lowered expectations a little bit, not a huge amount. Um, 3DS obviously is not doing nearly as quick as selling as the th original DS is, but it's still doing pretty well. Um, top selling console in the market, you know, all that sort of thing. And uh, with by the end of its fiscal year, Nintendo hopes to reach 9 million sales for 3DS handheld line, which is more than doable. They got the new 3DS launching in the in the West, uh, you know, no problems there. Moving on, I want to talk about um, the the amount of money that Nintendo made. So we know there there's multiple measures when it comes to financials, and it's all very confusing. You know, you've got the um, you've got the net income, which is the total amount that they made. You got the operating income. You've got sales. So I want to break down each one. So. Nintendo hit net sales of $2.3 billion um, for the first three quarters of their 2015 fiscal year. Um, came $2.3 billion, that's how much they sold in total in revenue, which is pretty great. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about these other little figures. They got uh, $270 million, um, or I'm sorry, $170 million of operating income. What does this mean? Now, this means how much they're making on a regular basis um, per day, just based off of their regular selling and buying. Um, so, that's not the most important figure, but it's an important one. The fact that it's positive is very, very good, because in previous years, Nintendo has actually been losing out on operating, uh, operating they've actually had not operating income, they've had operating losses. Um, which is significant because they were losing money on the daily operations and the way that they were making money is that essentially with having so much money in the bank, they could keep it in the bank, rank up interest rates or interest. Um, also, the way the exchange rate works is it would work very favorably when they changed dollars back into yens because the yen was so weak. Um, it would help recover a lot of those losses. Now, not only do they have an operating profit, but they made, they made a really good income. Overall, their net income was about 250 million so far this fiscal year. Um, they hope to make, I think, 
right here it says 380 million by the by the end of the year which is very good um these this is net income so this is total you know profit um i guess you'd call it and it's it's everything taken together or they're back in the blacks they're making tons of money everything's great way more than they have been making in previous years so nintendo is in excellent shape no you know all that nintendo stuff it's I mean, it never really had any merit because they had so much money in the bank, but this just proves that they're okay because even though their consoles aren't really selling like gangbusters, their games are selling so much and their, um, and their amiibo are selling tons, they've got a lot of money in the bank, as I said, getting interest, and I, that's what I really want to talk about, these games. Uh, Nintendo released their sales figures. There were 12 million sellers in 2014, 12 games that sold more than a million units in that one year. Um, so I'm just going to read off this list and tell you how many units they sold. Um, Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire sold 9.35 million units, Smash Bros. for 3DS 6.19, Tomodachi Life sold about 2 million units, Mario Kart 7 1.8 million, Pokemon X and Y 1.45 million, New Super Mario Bros. 2 1.2 million, Animal Crossing New Leaf about 1 million, Kirby Triple Deluxe about 1 million. Uh, on the Wii U, Mario Kart 8 sold 4.8 million units, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U sold about 3.4 million units, Super Mario 3D World about 1.6, and Nintendo Land about 1.35. Now. This is saying very, very a lot of a lot of important things. Number one, Mario Kart 8 has an attach rate of about half the Wii U's, which is incredible. Um, pretty much every other Wii U owner owns Mario Kart 8. It's the largest selling Wii U game. That's it's mind blowing, really. The fact that more than half of Wii U owners have picked up Mario Kart 8. That's an incredible attach rate. Um, all of Nintendo software is making tons of money for Nintendo. Also, they sold more than five million Amiibo. If you count a ten buck profit on each one, that's a ton of more money. Um, uh, uh, brands, and I think that this is important. I wrote an article about this over at Nintendo Enthusiast. Essentially, um, all the money that Nintendo spent on you know new projects or new IPs, I, Bayonetta, for example, isn't a new IP, but it's new on Nintendo. They're not doing nearly as well as Nintendo's established brands, and there wasn't a single one other than Tomodachi Life that sold more than a million units last year. It's it's disappointing, but it's kind of the reality that Nintendo finds themselves in. So I'm not gonna rail too much more on about this. You can go check out my article on Nintendo Enthusiast want to learn more but essentially uh you know there's a reason why nintendo releases so many mario games and there's a reason why they sell you know so many donkey kong games and pokemon games it's because they sell and you know if you had a game like bayonetta which you know didn't sell bad but if it sold half a million units and then you got mario kart which sold five million units ten times that amount obviously they're gonna they're gonna choose mario kart over bayonetta when it comes to publishing and, you know, that's just something, it's a hard reality of Nintendo. Nintendo fans like Nintendo games. Um, and finally, I want to talk about Media Create. Obviously, Japanese sales, uh, they're, kind of, they're kind of not so important as they used to be, but still relatively important. Pretty much, uh, the, top, the, the top game we're looking at is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Sold about 30,000 units in its first week in Japan. Seems a little low, not going to lie. Um, nothing really else to note in Japan. So uh, that's that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode. As I said, no questions this week because um, because there was just so much sales data to analyze. As always, if you like the episode, please like the episode, leave comments in the in the comment section below. Questions uh, in future episodes, I'll be happy to answer those. And uh, good luck for everyone shopping for Amiibos. It's rough out there. I'm going to try to get Rosalina. That's the only one I didn't pre-order. It's gonna be tough. And uh, don't get you know run over by a crowd that would suck uh thanks for watching and see you guys next week